A good foggy morning here in San Diego. Uh, I filmed an entire video and none of the segments I filmed when I put them on the computer would play. So here's my yard and I'm gonna have to go back in and refilm that entire video. So let's go inside. Here comes the intro. What are we doing this morning, guys? Well, we're gonna look at some stuff that came in that we haven't done first impressions on. So I've got like four knives that we're gonna just uh, look at. I may have shown a couple of them in a live feed the other day, but I haven't done any first impressions on them yet. So we're gonna unbox these right now and take a look at them. So we're not gonna do it right here. So you guys know what time it is. Turn down the volume because here comes a little bit of music. guys before we even start looking at knives i wanted to mention something i've had so many people ask me where i got this mat it is right here this is at nafs.com so this is ben from blade hq this was his project that he started he started nafs.com they do a bunch of stuff there's a ferrum forge one of these i don't know how many others they have i like this one so this was just something that i picked up you know they're not giving me anything for this but this is a really cool mat i, I have two of them i have one that's ferrum forge and i like it because i have some visuals and if I ever want to refer to a blade shape, it's all present and stuff like that. So this is really cool. Just a little cool thing that Ben started. So yeah, go, go give them, go give them a holler and take a look at it. These mats are really nice. So just to answer that question, cause I have a lot of people asked now let's get into the knife. First knife is from a customer. This is in for sharpening, but I wanted to take a look at this. I have not even looked at it yet. So you and I are going to see it in person for the first time. This is a Sandrin Knives. This is the titanium, uh, the tit or I'm sorry, a uh, uh, tungsten carbide blade. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna pull this out here because the uh, owner's address is on the box. So it's still in the bubble wrap. It came shipped in to me. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Now let's take a quick look at this. Let me see here. Um, I have more bubble wrap. I'm not worried about saving that bubble wrap. So these are interesting. These knives are made out of tungsten carbide. Let me grab my reading glasses so I can make sure this is in focus. Getting old, guys. Got to have reading glasses to even see the uh, video that we're looking at. So, yeah, this is kind of what I was expecting. These are kind of the same thing that I saw when I did one for Elliot Williamson. We were testing it and it is not sharp. So we're going to see, I believe that the tungsten carbide is just at the edge. I don't know. I'll have to look it up, but that is a, that's a pretty simple, I'm going to grab this and have this come across the screen like a jet while well, the jet wash was going, but I, I wasn't quick enough. This was, this needs to just stay on my workbench. Uh, so what I was saying is, this is this is kind of what I was expecting. These things aren't great. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't like the tungsten carbide knives. They're something that I, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it. But we'll see. We'll see how it sharpens up and stuff like that. But these are like really, really plain. This is a really plain knife. Um, and it's a lockback, but like you have to pull back on this. I'm not a fan of that so far. So... Um, it's nice and light, but it just, this kind of feels, it kind of feels, I don't know. I've never seen one before. The action on it's nice and smooth. I'm not gonna lie. Action on it's really good. Uh, it's almost like an access lock or a shark lock, but that's, that is, that is bitey. That is bitey and uncomfortable. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it works out. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but like I said, I got to sharpen it. Um, it's first impressions. It's got some hot spots. Pocket clip is a little unusual. Actually, like I said, though, the action on it's really nice. But, like, to get a lot, I'm trying to, you got, we're, we're learning about this as we go. But, I mean, that is really, really plain. Um, jumping on it's pretty sharp. I don't know. Let me see here. Is this magnetic? Is this part steel? So, yeah, this part of the blade is steel. So, the tungsten has got to be something that's up at the very edge, almost like a sand mai. 
And I think I think you can kind of see that line. So, well, there you go, guys. There was the uh, Sandrin knives. Uh, I'm not sure which model this is. I'll have to look at it again. Uh, like I said, this is in for sharpening, and we'll probably do a live sharpening video with this one, but yeah. Okay, let's bring up the next one. Next few knives came in from Beardo the Weirdo. I've had them here for a while. We've just not done a first impressions yet. So a couple of them are these. Um, these are the Steingrabber Performance Knives uh, fixed blades. This is the Shark, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Like I've had this out a couple times. I really haven't done anything with it, but this thing is super comfortable. Um, CPM crew wear on the blade. Alex does a really good job. He keeps his blade stock nice and thin, and this thing is super thin behind the edge. The handles are really nice. They're really comfortable. Um, this is, I, this is not, I think this is, what is this called? Ultrex or something like that. It is not truly micarta, I don't believe. It's like, it looks like somebody took a bath towel and made micarta. But yeah, like these knives are all made, American made, beautiful knives. I'm a fan for a good fixed blade. So this thing is really comfortable, nice recessed, removable hardware so that if you get your knife wet, you can clean up underneath it. Um, not a fan of the sharpening choil, I can tell already. Uh, we'll see. I don't think that there's enough room on that. Um, Alex, when he found out I had a couple of these, uh, he was like, be gentle. Um, this is a good looking knife. I just, um, I'm trying to think like for that sharpening piece where I would be on that, you know, whether that is something that I am going to like or not. So we'll see. I'm probably going to sharpen this. I have sharpened crew wear before. I haven't sharpened any Alex's crew wear, but like I said, the grind on this is really good. Full flat grind comes down. Nice distal taper. Good. I mean, the blade to handle ratio is a little bit out of what I typically would like, but it is really, really comfortable. I don't know, like you could really get up on that and having that big handle on that small blade, you have a lot of control. When you start getting a longer blade, you lose some of the control out at the work. Um, now, I mean, would I want this as like a tactical carry? Probably not. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. I have not done anything with this knife. All I did was we did pull this out of a box um, on a live feed, but I didn't do any first impressions. So I've, I've had it in hand a couple times, but this thing is really nice. Nice handle work. I mean, Alex's knives are great. I'm, I want to see one of his folders. He started making folders now. A uh, little bit of wear on that, but that's probably just from in and out of sheath, or it might have been I don't know, it might have been sharpening. Who knows? Comes with a nice, nice leather sheath. I meant to mention this. Um, I don't know who made this one. Let's see. Can you see it? I don't know if that might be Lancelot leather. I don't know whose that is. Nice pocket clip on the sheath. Good stitching. The sheath is nice and secure. You get your whole knife down in there. So there's the Stein Grabber Shark. Um, like I said, it's nice to finally get one of them in. I've talked with Alex a couple times about getting his knives on. So let's go ahead and move on to the next knife. I'm going to get some coffee. So this, uh, all three of these knives, these knives we're going to see right now, came in from Beardo the Weirdo. So this is a, a native, Spyderco native. And I've had a native before, but this is a much nice. this is much nicer than mine was. Mine was... Mine was kind of chintzy feeling. Um, the the grip was not good. This is in Spy 27. So this is that proprietary steel, I believe, that they that they came up with. I'm interested to see. I've heard good things about it. I know that, that Sean, I believe this is the steel that Sean over at uh, Big Brown Bear, uh, Sean Houston, had uh, had something to do with. I'm kind of impressed. I'm, I'm digging... Those handles are really nice. And hang on a second. Let, I've got, I want to compare something. I think uh, there's a difference in the logo. There is a bit of a difference in the logo between what I'm used to seeing. I don't remember if my native had that. But the native was a good knife. The only reason I got rid of mine, one, I didn't get rid of it. I gave it to my brother-in-law as a gift. I had a native and it was a limited edition. Uh, it was a limited run uh, that was done on um, Knife Center. And I didn't like the steel. I didn't like the XHP. I don't think they did a real great job heat treating that. I've heard that Spyderco's heat treat has really improved. I don't remember that it was... I don't remember mine being this well finished and well done. This is stiff. You're not going to Spidey flick this one. Typical lockback. Typical Spyderco 
pocket clip. I do remember my, I do remember mine had this, this was a little bit unique, that lanyard hole that went through. I remember on mine was like that. Um, but it is a four way reversible tip up, tip down, left, right. And I don't remember the lock back being on, on mine being so robust. That's a big, thick lock bar. And I think the blade stock on this one's a little bit thicker. Um, but we'll see. I'm going to, I'm going to do the sharpening on this. I may give this a carry. It is a really comfortable knife in hand. I can't lie about that. I love the Endura series because of how comfortable they are. Um, I may actually break down and get one that doesn't have a crap heat treat. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of digging this one. I'm just surprised. I'm, I'm curious about a couple things. Did they get rid of the Boyd dent in the lock bars or is that just something on the is that just something on the native? I'm not that much of a Spyderco fanboy that I would know. So, uh, you know, let me know in, in the comments down below. Um, I, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I like having that little recessed area on it. So, yeah, first impressions on this. I'm, I'm kind of digging it. The na like I said, I liked my native. I had it. I just didn't like the steel it was in. And we'll see how this Spy 27 works out. It does need sharpened. I'm sorry, Beardo. I don't know if you did the sharpening on this, but it definitely needs a little bit of work. So there we go, guys. There's the third knife, Spider Co. Native in Spy 27. I'm kind of, I'm, he, the reason he sent this, the CPM Spy 27, is because I had not gotten to see it. I, I do like that full flat grind on that. Yeah, I think they've changed some of the... I think there's been some changes to this knife overall since I owned one. So there you go, guys. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So this is the last knife that we're going to do today. This is another um, Steingrabber Performance Knives. This is another Alex Steingrabber. This one is the Sasquatch. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know who he has doing his sheaths, but that is quality leather. You know how you, you, you can smell it? This smells um that is some amazing good leather um on the sheath um nice pocket clip on that you got the, the the hardware here that you could tighten that or loosen that i guess if you needed to but honestly <laughs> i love the smell of leather it smells like you walked into the tack room on the farm you can smell all the the uh the uh, saddles and stuff. But I do like the idea that there's a pocket clip on both of the sheaths for these. So just, I know I'm talking a lot about the sheath. We're not looking at the knife, but for a fixed blade, the way you're going to carry it is almost as important as the knife itself. This would be something that would hold up for a very long time. It's pretty, looks pretty resilient. It do, It's nice and thick. Doesn't feel like it would gather up too much um, moisture. I think this is a, this, this is, I think this is one of my favorite sheets I've seen in a long time, but let's go ahead and get to the knife. So this is the Sasquatch, the Steingraber Performance Knife Sasquatch. And this one done, this one's done in CPM 440V. Now I haven't looked that up. I do know that CPM has done a version of 440. So that's 440 vanadium. Um, this one is not as thin as the shark, but still really thin. Now I know that what you guys are saying is look at that stubby little blade, but I'm going to tell you having been a hunter for a long time, this is something that would be right up my alley. I can feel it right now. Nice little pivot point. I can get a grip on it. I can get a full four finger grip on it. And like we said, guys, I have a hard time finding rubber gloves for doing maintenance that fit my hands. So this is a really comfortable grip, especially if you're an outdoorsman. Um, it's really reminiscent of a knife that I owned called the little finger. And I'll probably put a picture in of it right here. I'm giving myself a little visual cue right here a picture of the little finger uh which was an old timer my dad had the sharp finger i had the little finger it reminds me of that because it's got the big blade or a big handle small blade really good for like someone younger to be able to work but it gives you so much good control like that is really good control if you're an outdoorsman you're hunting if you're skinning out an animal and doing just like your field dressing i this would be this would be right up my alley as a hunter, I can get right up on it. I can pivot that around. Look at that. Such good control on that. I think that this is probably, I like this shark for what it is. It's probably of the ones, it's probably my favorite, but as far as functionality and seeing an actual in use for this, for me personally, I think this is probably the, the one out of that, of the two that I would see a personal use. And I like the fact he didn't try to take the grind. I like to see 
the grind lines. This is a handmade knife. I like to be able to see the hand work on it. Um, some people don't like that coarse finish. I love like a 120 finish and then just maybe a quick tumble. Um, so that's really good. I like the all the markings. He's left a lot of the finish, just the rough finish on it. I love it. It's great. And these handles are amazing. I'm going to have to look it up. I have to ask Alex what this material is, but they're amazing. And it's it's not heavy at all. It's nice and light. But yeah, right there, that is, you've got such good control, control of that knife. If you're skinning out an animal, that would be perfect. That's a, I would have to say that is a perfect outdoor knife right there for it. Like a younger hunter or some, I mean, any hunter right there, that would be just about perfect. So, all right, guys, that's the last one. Let's turn this around and do some final thoughts. Great knife, Alex. So there you go, guys. There was, uh, there was like four knives there. Um, I can't remember if I threw a fifth in because I'm recording the outro well after the video. Um, but I do have to say that this, this Steingrabber Shark uh, is a great, great little fixed blade. Uh, I'm a fixed blade guy, and I really dig this. So, um, And Alex Alex, is just a pretty cool dude. I, I talk to him pretty regularly on Instagram. We're in a group chat. Uh, so that's it, guys. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. But please try to tell me why. I can't change it if you don't tell me what you don't like. If you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment and hit the bell icon so you get notifications of all the videos that I put up. I put up two videos a day or a video and a live feed, usually also a midday short. So if you wanna get notifications of all that, you have to make sure that not only the bell icon is hit, but you have to turn on notifications on your device. If you wanna support the channel financially, it's as simple as going down to the description and picking one of the ways that I have down there. I have memberships that I have a bunch of different tiered benefits. Everyone gets access to my Gilded server, Everyone gets $5 off my sharpening service and the premium tier guy, guys get access to a sharpening tutorial series. Other ways you can do it. I have affiliate links down below. Anything you purchase with the affiliate links, I get a portion of it at checkout. It doesn't cost you anything. And I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. I've set up a coupon code that works anywhere on Ember Shirt Co. And that coupon code is crazy sharp. All one word, capital C, capital S, crazy sharp. All one word saves you 10%. If you send me pictures of you wearing my merchandise, I will put them in a video. Guys, I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday, and I will see you in the next video.